I'd like to start off this video by apologizing since you guys have been asking for this video for several months now and I was supposed to deliver it during December. That being said, given the length of the current season and how long we've had the current field of weapons, I think I've had enough time to discuss the potency of the best primaries in Destiny 2's current patch. Before we dig in, there are a lot of primaries in this game. To be exact, there are 264 legendary non-sunset primaries, excluding adepts but including older versions of reprised weapons. As such, it would be both very tedious for me and very boring for you to watch me ramble on about every last primary, especially when many of them are similar and are either unobtainable or not worth a second glance. Instead, I've gone through every single primary in the game on my own time, and I've decided to present you with what I think are the best 4 or so options from every primary weapon type, be it SMGs, sidearms, or bows. Why 4? Well, in my opinion, legendary primaries really serve two purposes in endgame content. Either efficient ad clear with an emphasis on splash damage, think like a sunshot, or quality of life in endgame content, specifically champ stunning, like an arbalist. Since we need options in both the kinetic and energy slots, that makes a total of 4 options for every primary type. You'll see that there are some exceptions to this rule if I think a single option fits both roles very well, but for the most part we'll be sticking to our formula. In addition, I'll also add in an honorable mention for every primary that I talk about, especially since a few of them are only obtainable sometimes and have viable or just as good alternatives. With that, all my bases should be covered, so let's start with our first primary category. Going alphabetically, our first primary type is the Auto Rifle. Unfortunately, one of the lower damage profile primaries, Auto Rifles rely on their mid-range capabilities to safely stun champs when mods like Anti-Barrier Auto Rifle are around. While the Kinetic slot doesn't typically feature many strong splash ad clear options, as you'll see throughout the rest of the video, Breakneck's recent reprise gives it access to Enlightened Action, Subsistence, Shoot to Loot, Kinetic Tremors, and Onslaught. Despite having a big perk pool, this vaults it past all the other auto rifle options, with the nearest alternative being Rufus's Fury, a strand auto with Demolitionist, Frenzy, and Hatchling. While Rufus has good quality of life with a huge mag and a good archetype, Breakneck's affinity and solid splash perks make it an undeniable top pick. As for champ stunning, my choice has to be Horror Story. Access to both Under Over and Frenzy combine a neutral damage perk, a reload perk, and a free 50% boost to barrier shields into easily the best option. For an alternative choice, Duty Bound is decent thanks to stunning recovery and frenzy, but it doesn't have any perks specifically great for champ stun time reduction. On the flip side, the energy slot offers up two craftable options that I had to point out. For ad clear, I wanted to feature Abyss Defiance and for champ stunning, come to pass. Now you might be surprised, specifically because most people do not favor high impact autos due to their low fire rate and mediocre damage profile. However, these two autos bring perk combinations that just can't be passed up compared to their competition. With Abyss Defiant, we're looking at Enlightened Action and Incandescent, which is already good enough on its own, but then you also have the phenomenal Cursed Thrall Origin trait that Crota's End weapons come packaged with. Rosarago 4 from this season is also worth a look, with its insane rewind rounds and onslaught synergy, and despite no splash perk, I'd say a 60 plus percent DPS perk is enough of an outlier to warrant some usage, even for single target. Come to Pass's viability should be a little bit more apparent than Abyss Defiance. Although Amit also has access to enhanced adaptive munitions, Come to Pass's extended range and access to Genesis and Shoot to Loot are arguably better perks in endgame content than something like Turnabout on the Amit. Plus, Psychohack's pretty good against a champ in a face-off too. Bows are up next under the magnifying glass. While bows have historically had pretty lackluster diversity, recently a couple options have caught my eye. In the kinetic slot, I actually only have one bow to talk about, Raconteur featuring Archer's Tempo, Shoot to Loot, Explosive Head, and Headstone on top of the superior precision frame archetype. Conveniently, these perks cover every aspect that you'd want in an endgame PvE bow. Archer's Tempo for sustain fire, Shoot to Loot for when repeated shots aren't as valuable, Explosive Head for the classic bow damage perk, and Headstone for a more niche splash option. The only downside with Raconteur is its affinity. A kinetic bow gets a free 10% bonus against unshielded targets, and for the majority of the time, that's what you'll be using bows on. As a result, I'm also going to recommend Accrued Redemption as an alternative, since it has most of what Raconteur offers, just more annoying to farm in exchange for being kinetic. Hopefully it gets a craftable reprise soon. As for the energy slot, I have three rules to offer up. Tyranny of Heaven is an obvious pick for Splash Ad Clear with its unique Dragonfly and Incandescent combo, with Tripwire Canary being a usable alternative with Explosive Head instead of Incandescent. As for Champ Stunning, I've selected two bow rolls, one for Overloads and one for Barriers. 
For Overloads, we have Prius Dianix 4 with Shoot to Loot, Archer's Tempo, and Explosive Head, plus Stunning Recovery, with Strident Whistle as a solid alternative with essentially the same perks. For Barriers, Tripwire Canary makes a repeat appearance as a bow that can one-tap barriers if you crit with Under Over, subject to certain conditions. Bit of a niche pick, and even though Under Your Skin has adaptive munitions, I wouldn't recommend it as an alternative since bows can two-tap barriers regardless. Hand Cannons are some of Destiny's most beloved primaries. Thanks to some recent buffs, they hit like a truck against majors, and some of the more newly released options have decent splash damage perks as well. Let's start with the kinetic slot. To no one's surprise, the premier pick here has to be Fatebringer. With its kinetic affinity, access to explosive payload and frenzy or firefly, this thing is undeniably the best in slot option for both ad clear and champ stunning, even without craftable status or an origin trait. An honorable mention goes out to Warden's Law, which also sees some use with Lucky Pants for a boss or mini boss melt option thanks to its special burst frame with a 20% boss damage perk in Vorpal Weapon. As for the energy slot, a couple recent options have shown themselves to be worthy of endgame loadouts. For ad clear, Zhaoli's Bane from King's Fall has to be the finest showing, with Explosive Payload, Incandescent, and Firefly all packaged into a solid adaptive frame. Nation of Beasts was also brought up in the conversation, but most people agree that Dragonfly, Volt Shot, and Explosive Payload are a slightly weaker combination than what Zhaoli's has to offer. If you're looking for a champ stun hand cannon, I'm going to make a slightly unorthodox recommendation hailing from the Trials of Osiris. Exalted Truth is a Void 140 with Under Over and Frenzy, the tried and true combination I praise so much on Horror Story. I've said it once, but I'll say it again, Frenzy is essentially an S tier reload perk and an S tier damage perk combined, so Under Over providing an additional 50% to barrier champion shields with no stacking on hit is excellent. If you don't want to trudge through Trials, Optative from the Reckoning Reprise from this season also has access to Rapid Hit and Under Over, a similar combination with a slightly worse perk than Frenzy. For a long time, Pulse Rifles have been amongst the worst if not the worst primary weapon type in Destiny 2 PvE endgame. While I can't definitively say that that time has come to an end, what I can do is provide you with what I think are the best ones right now for endgame PvE. Starting with the Kinetic slot, we have two perhaps unlikely mentions here. For ad clear, I've selected Battle Scar with its access to shoot to loot and kinetic tremors combined with a lightweight frame, which has a decent damage profile and great stats for quality of life in PvE. If you want an alternative, Chattering Bone from Last Wish is also very similar, subtracting shoot to loot and adding rapid hit and kill clip in the first column instead. Kill clip and kinetic tremors especially make for an interesting combo, particularly because Chattering Bone has a very high reload stat with the right craft, so a reload perk isn't incredibly important like with some other weapons on this list. As for champ stunning, I've actually put Stay Frosty as the front runner for kinetic slot pulse rifles. The reason? It has access to both enlightened action and under over, which is an excellent combo for a barrier pulse, with one of the best on hit reload perks in the game, as well as a perk that is specialized in popping shields. If the dawning isn't around, then another option you can try is the messenger with under over and kinetic tremors, but you'll have to deal with a noticeable lack of reload perk if you choose to go down this path. When it comes to energy pulses, we have a fair amount of ground to cover. Oversoul Edict from the new Crota's End Reprise takes the cake for me ad clear wise, with access to enhanced enlightened action, demolitionist, and volt shot on top of cursed thrall and one of the best pulse damage profiles in the rapid fire frame. If that's not your cup of tea, a decent alternative is the BXR55 Battler, which is also craftable but instead sports demolitionist and incandescent, with a unique frame that certainly isn't too shabby either. Longtime viewers of the channel will recognize my champ stun pulse pick. Insidious from Val the Disciple was almost made for this, with enhanced rapid hit and adaptive munitions packed into an aggressive burst frame, enabling a quick two burst of GM barrier champions almost reaching legendary arbalist levels of stun times. Although Augma PR6 also has adaptive munitions paired with disruption break, it comes at the cost of enhanced perk access and a strong reload perk, making it the clear alternative rather than the main attraction. Together with bows, scout rifles cover Destiny's truly long-range primary engagements. In the kinetic slot, there's actually only a handful of scout rifles that I thought were worthy of endgame mention, and most of these actually do double duty. For example, Randy's throwing knife covers both splash damage and champs, with access to rapid hit and kinetic tremors for the former, and under over and adaptive munitions for the latter. Both extremely potent combinations packed within the highest damage scout rifle archetype, the rapid fire. That's pretty tough to beat, but if you want something like explosive payload or shoot to loot for overloads or ammo sensitive environments, Hung Jury SR4 also covers those bases, but you'll have to take a less optimal archetype in exchange. 
Since I only covered one pair for the kinetic slot, I've actually decided to mention three pairs for the energy slot, one for add clear, one for barriers, and one for overloads or unstops. For the first category we have Doom of Chelchis, which features the lethal King's Fall double damage perk combo of Firefly and Dragonfly or Frenzy, only suffering due to its less than ideal precision frame. Another option worth mentioning is Trustee with Rapid Hit and Incandescent, offering some unique synergy between Incandescent Scorch Ticks, each triggering the Bray Inheritance Origin Traits ability energy gains. Adaptive Munitions also rolls on Doom of Chelches, so why not there? Well, I've actually got two picks I think are even better for barrier popping. First, Pointed Inquiry, a high impact scout which can two tap barriers without crits through enhanced adaptive munitions, with access to Shoot to Loot, Genesis, and Psycho Hack as well. An alternative with a slightly different frame but similar perks is Staccato 46, but given the accessibility of both, you're probably better off going with the former instead. Finally, our last set of scouts is essentially an explosive payload category, scouts that you'd use when Overload Scout or Unstoppable Scout are around. Tarnished Metal really stands out here as an excellent pick with a great lightweight frame on top of craftable Shoot to Loot and Explosive Payload, but if you don't need Shoot to Loot or don't have access to Plunder Patterns, then Vouchsafe from this season's Dreaming City Weapon Reprise also has Rapid Hit and Explosive Payload, a classic combo that people have been using for years. Although sidearms are often ridiculed in the endgame community, damage-wise they have the best damage profile of any primary, with some of them coming within spitting distance of SMG range. As usual, let's begin with the Kinetic Slot. Unfortunately, I don't think there are any truly potent splash damage sidearms in this slot at this time, since the only Kinetic Tremors option is Buzzard, which takes forever to trigger the perk compared to its total max size. As a result, the main option I think most people are drawn to when it comes to Kinetic Sidearms is Michael's Reverence, with Rewind Rounds, Demolitionist, Frenzy, and Hatchling combined within a rapid fire frame. Next up on our list is Kinetic Sidearms specializing in Champ Stunning. For first choice, I have a pick that you probably haven't considered for PvE, Allied Demand from Iron Banner. Not only does this adaptive sidearm have autoloading holster, a rarity on primaries these days, but its access to Frenzy and Under Over make it a great pick no matter what kind of champ you're up against. Not many great alternatives that have similar perks, but I guess I'll also mention Boudicca C, since it has Threat Detector and Frenzy. As for the energy slot, there's no doubt that most players agree on Brigand's Law being the best ad clear option, with its lethal combination of Threat Detector or Feeding Frenzy and Volt Shot. That being said, if you have access to an old 7 Seraph SI2 with Demolitionist and Dragonfly, it's not a bad alternative either. We rarely get a combo like that, especially on a sidearm. For champs, there's a wonderful addition from last season that comes from one of my favorite sidearm archetypes, the Lightweight. And that is none other than Heliocentric QSC, the spiritual successor to the Redback 5SI with Compulsive and Vorpal, a sidearm I loved using for anti-barrier sidearm when that was around. Featuring Demolitionist and Frenzy, a rare and coveted neutral combo, in addition to Heal Clip, Enlightened Action, and Incandescent, incredible. Finally, we arrive at SMGs. Arguably the most popular primary type among endgame enjoyers, and the primary weapon people point to to say, why can't insert other primary here be like this? While SMGs are typically associated with just shredding through ads with raw firepower rather than splash perks, a couple of the more recent additions to the game have given us a couple good splash options as well. The showrunner from Season 22 has Overflow or Grave Robber with Kinetic Tremors, combined with a lightweight frame, while Submission has the classic Overflow or Subsistence with Frenzy. While neither are perfect options, they're both not bad if you're looking for a Kinetic Ad Clear SMG. Another surprising option shows up when we look for Kinetic Champ Stun SMGs. Unending Tempest from the Crucible marks the third time in this video where we get Under Over and Frenzy on the same weapon, and even as a Precision Frame SMG, the worst in PvE, it still feels decent and stuns quickly. As for the alternative, I think Cold Front with Enlightened Action and Attrition Orbs is also an interesting choice, as it's one of the only primaries where I think Attrition Orbs is usable, if that ever becomes useful. Now onto Energy SMGs, one of the most contested primary slots. First up, I've decided to place Subjunctive in the top choice slot, with its solid lightweight archetype, enhanced threat detector, shoot to loot, stats for all, volt shot, and one for all. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but a tasty one. While Aikilos SMG V1.0.3 used to be the go-to for most endgame players, Subjunctive has a more diverse array of useful perks on top of having a more favorable archetype. I have to also give a shout out to Unforgiven from the Duality Dungeon, which sports the excellent Demolitionist and Frenzy combo that I mentioned earlier on Heliocentric. Although we've only had Anti-Barrier SMG once since artifacts came to be, I'm still going to make some recommendations for barrier stunning since you can just use a decent neutral play SMG for non-barrier champs. My first pick is going to be Parabellum from this season, with Enlightened Action and Under Over, paired with Field Tested as a good long duration activity origin trait. 
If you want another option, Out of Bounds from Crucible also has Threat Detector or Demolitionist and Under Over, with a lightweight frame instead of the adaptive that comes with Parabellum. And with that, we've covered every primary type. Hope this answers what a lot of you have been asking for without becoming a 3 hour long video. To be clear, in order to stick to the 4 per type structure I designed at the start of this video, I've had to cover a lot of ground I wouldn't normally cover, including mentioning some primaries I'd never personally use, as well as perhaps making it seem like I condone primary use more than I really do. For what it's worth, legendary primaries probably make up less than 1% of the kills I've gotten in the game over the past year, but you guys really wanted me to give my thoughts on this topic. When it comes to designing optimal loadouts for any endgame activity, we'll definitely cover that ground later this year, but for now, these are the primaries I would use if I did use legendary primaries. As with my other endgame analysis videos, I'll be returning to update this every season with new primaries dethroning old ones in both the ad clear and champ stun roles. If you have any endgame primaries that you think missed the list this time, feel free to let me know in the comments. As for what's next, we're going to be updating exotics with increased attention to detail for this season's sandbox.